Each year, 350 million tons of plastic are produced, generating the United States over $400 billion in revenue from the plastic industry. Plastic is used in most items you see around you, from water bottles and food containers to toys and electronics. Plastic is an integral part of everyday life in the modern world. So, how is plastic made? We will start by examining the raw materials needed to produce plastic. Here's a question to challenge you. What are the two primary materials used in plastic production? Your options are processed wood, natural gas, crude oil, or aluminum. If you guess natural gas and crude oil, you are right. Crude oil is a complex mixture of hydrocarbons, which are molecules composed of hydrogen and carbon. Deep within crude oil are shorter hydrocarbon molecules, called ethylene and propylene. These hydrocarbons are the basic building blocks used to produce plastic polymers. In other words, the origins of plastic can be traced back to these fossil fuels extracted from the earth. Crude oil starts underground or the ocean floor where it is pumped up through the ground or sea in long pipes. Natural gas is extracted from rock formations deep under fields and waterways. In order to obtain the smaller hydrocarbon molecules needed for plastic production, crude oil undergoes a process called cracking. Cracking involves breaking down or cracking the larger hydrocarbon molecules found in crude oil into smaller hydrocarbons. In thermal cracking, heat and pressure are used to break the hydrocarbon chains. The crude oil is heated to very high temperatures, around 750 degrees Fahrenheit to 900 degrees Fahrenheit, inside large furnaces. This causes the large molecules to break apart into smaller hydrocarbons like ethylene and propylene, which are the building blocks of plastic. Once crude oil has been cracked into smaller hydrocarbons, the next step is to produce monomers from these molecules. Monomers are simple, single units that join together to form polymers. The cracked hydrocarbon streams are purified through processes like fractional distillation. This separates out the specific hydrocarbons needed for certain plastic polymers, for example, ethylene and propylene can be isolated and processed into important monomers like ethylene and propylene monomers. The type of monomer produced depends on the desired plastic polymer. This stage is critical, as these monomers will later join together by polymerization to create the long chains that make up plastic. Once the monomers have been produced, the next major step is polymerization. The produced monomers are bonded into long repeating chain-like molecules known as polymers. The length of the polymer chains and their bonding patterns determine the final plastic's unique physical characteristics. After the monomers have polymerized to form plastic polymer chains, various additives can be incorporated to enhance the properties of the final plastic product. Different types of additives serve different purposes. Plasticizers are added to improve flexibility and thermal stabilizers help prevent degradation from heat exposure. Fillers like caulk and mica can enhance strength and durability and colorants like pigments or dyes provide vibrant colors. The quantities and types of additives vary widely based on the application. They allow plastics to be customized for unique needs. They expand the functionality and range of applications possible with plastics. Once the plastic polymers and additives have been synthesized, the next phase is processing these raw materials into finished plastic products. There are various processing techniques used in plastics manufacturing depending on the desired final product. The most efficient way to produce plastic is to convert synthesized polymers and additives into small pellet forms. This way, these small pellets can easily be melted and shaped into desired end products. To create the small pellets, or nurdles, plastic is extruded through a dye plate to form multiple strands. The strands are cooled in water baths and chopped into small pellets. From this state, pellets are put through the following processing techniques. Extrusion is a common technique that involves melting plastic and forcing it through a dye to create long sheets or filaments. Plastic piping, tubing, and weather stripping are often produced by extrusion. Injection molding is used to make precise, three-dimensional objects by injecting molten plastic into a mold cavity and letting it harden. Items like bottles, containers, toys are made this way. Blow molding starts with a molten tube of plastic that is expanded with air pressure inside a mold cavity, enabling large hollow shapes like plastic drums or barrels. Once the hot molten plastic has been processed and shaped, the next step is allowing it to cool and solidify into its final form. The cooling process is carefully controlled to make sure the plastic solidifies evenly throughout the molded product. Uneven cooling can cause warping or defects. As the plastic cools, it shrinks slightly due to thermal contraction. 
So molds are designed to account for this shrinkage and achieve the proper dimensions in the final product. The final shape of the plastic is permanently set as it hardens in its mold. From simple films and sheets to elaborate molded structures, the possibilities are endless when it comes to shaping plastics. And that is how plastic is made. Mass production of certain plastic items has become needed as one million plastic bottles are bought around the globe each minute. So next time you find yourself enjoying an ice cold Coke, you definitely aren't alone. Cheers to that.